Hey, this is Zisto, and welcome back to part three of our tutorial series for the Long Dark Survival Mode Hardest Difficulty Interloper. First two videos, we focused on the early game, getting items, crafting gear, and getting a bow and arrow. This video, we're going to go over all the different animals in the game, how to interact with them, how to stay away from them if you want to, and how to hunt them if you want to. So first up, we'll go over rabbits. Rabbits are passive animals, meaning they have no means to hurt you, and they will run away from you if they detect you. Early in the game's development, the main way to get rabbits was to make some snares. Snares are made at a crafting bench with a piece of reclaimed wood and a cured gut. And what you do is anywhere you see rabbits, you place the snare on the ground, and then you come back the next day, and either you've got rabbits in it or you don't. If you're not getting rabbits in your snares, but you see rabbits around in the area, just try a slightly different position for the snares and check back in about a day again. Anytime you catch a rabbit with a snare, you have to manually reset the snare, and if you don't check back on the snare in a reasonable amount of time, the rabbit's body will disappear, so you can't just leave an area for a long time and come back and expect to find fresh rabbits in your snare. But honestly, snares are almost never used anymore, because at a certain point in the game's development, they added the ability to pick up a rock, chuck it at a rabbit, snap its neck, and bam, you've got a free rabbit. This is way faster, way easier, and makes snares pretty much obsolete. When you aim a stone at a rabbit, use your thumbnail as a guide and try to wait for the rabbit to stop moving first. If you want to get closer to a rabbit, you can crouch hop your way closer, and they are almost totally oblivious to your presence. Since you're throwing the rock with your right arm, as you get super close to a rabbit, you'll need to aim farther down and to the right. And we'll go over this in the wolf section, but I'll also mention here that you can use rabbits as a way to distract wolves. Moving on to deer, deer are the other passive animal in the game, so they can't hurt you and they will run away from you when they detect you. Deer will also detect you from a much further distance than rabbits will, so you'll need to be patient and wait for them to put down their head to shoot at them. And it's better to shoot at the chest or the head than at the hindquarters. When your archery skill is low, it's best to go to a more confined location like the ravine, so if you don't kill the deer with the first shot, you'll have an easier time chasing it down or finding the corpse later if the weather's too bad for you to chase it right then. If you do lose track of the deer you shot, you can follow the hoof prints and the blood in the snow, or if you're looking for the corpse later, you can listen for crows and look for them circling above the corpse in the air. If you see blood after shooting any animal in the game, with the exception of a moose, they will eventually bleed out so you'll be able to find their corpse later, although it may be difficult depending on where you are, how open the terrain is, how far away they ran. The moose is the only animal that you have to kill directly with arrow damage and they will never bleed out. I should also mention that if you injure an animal and immediately go inside a building that has a loading screen, there's a chance for the animal to reset. So if you're waiting for an animal to bleed out, it's best to do it outdoors in the same region as where you injured it. So now we'll talk about wolves, which are the animal that most players when they're new to interloper have the most difficulty with. Wolves spawn in groups of 1 to 4, and they are aggressive to the player. When a wolf detects you by vision or by scent, it will slowly stalk you while growling. As long as you keep moving and maintain distance between you and the wolf, you can prevent an attack almost indefinitely. If you're carrying anything with a strong scent like raw meat or uncured guts, the radius at which a wolf can detect you is hugely increased, so be very careful whenever you have to carry around something that's stinky. You can shake the wolf from your trail by clambering over rocks that are too steep for it to walk on, or by changing zones or entering buildings. If you've got a lit torch, you can scare the wolf away by dropping it and aiming a weapon at the wolf. This also works with a flare or open campfire, but not with any kind of closed fire, like a fire barrel or the stove at a fishing hut. If you see wolves in your way, and they haven't noticed you yet, you can distract them by throwing a stone to make a noise far away which hopefully gets them out of your immediate path. Another thing you can do if there's a wolf aggroed onto you that's following you, or there's a wolf in front of you that you have to get past, and there happens to be deer or rabbits nearby, is you can either scare the deer or the rabbit into the wolf, or you can aggro onto the wolf and lead it into the deer or the rabbit. And the wolf will switch from being aggressive to you to being aggressive to the animal. It'll kill the deer or the rabbit, and then you can either get away safely by steering clear of the wolf, or you can aim a rock at the wolf to scare it away and take advantage of the deer or rabbit corpse. Or if you got a bow and arrow, you can shoot the wolf to get two corpses for one.
if a wolf does get too close, you'll enter a quick time event where the wolf attacks you and you've got to select a weapon to defend yourself with. The best weapon in the game to defend yourself with is the heavy hammer in terms of how fast it will get the wolf off of you. However, it will not cause the wolf to bleed, so it will not die later. The second best item for wolf defense is the improvised hatchet, which will cut the animal. So even though you got attacked, you can be sure that the wolf will die later. Wolf attacks have a lot of randomness in terms of their severity. You always want to be carrying around several bandages and old man's beard to stop bleeding and to stop the spread of infection. They will also scratch up your clothing, so after a bad wolf attack, you may have to repair some of the things you've been wearing. If your health drops very low, you may want to use an emergency stim, which will give you 15% health back and infinite stamina for a short duration of time so you can sprint to shelter. Don't forget to bandage though, because it's not going to stop the bleeding. Another thing to note is that only one wolf can be aggressive towards you at any one time, so you can use this to your benefit in certain circumstances where there's a wolf following you aggressively and there's other wolves that haven't noticed you yet ahead of you in your path. The wolf behind you, as long as you don't scare it away, will be the only wolf to act aggressively towards you and the wolves in front of you will remain passive. If you have a bow and arrow, you can also use this technique to shoot the passive wolf without any kind of threat of it attacking you. Once you do have a bow and arrow, you can make the choice of whether to evade the wolf or to start actively hunting them. And if you do want to hunt them, you have to decide whether to shoot them from far away or close up. If you shoot them from far away, you're technically going to be safer most of the time. But it's more likely that you miss or that you merely injure the animal, and wolves can run a very far distance. It can be hard to find the corpse later, and you may not ever see that arrowhead again. A riskier but much more consistent method of killing wolves is to walk towards them and shoot them as they charge you. You want to close the distance quickly so the wolf runs straight towards you and it makes it easier to aim. Alternatively, if they're a little bit farther away and the terrain is quite flat, you can pulse your bow to make them attack from a distance, and by the time they get to you, they are usually running straight towards you, which again makes them easier to hit. It's much easier to hit them in the face or the chest this way, and most of the time you'll kill them instantly. In the rare instance that you only injure the wolf, they'll usually die during the struggle because they don't have much health left. Of course, sometimes you're going to miss using this method, which means you're going to get attacked more often. So only use this method if your health is high, your clothes are repaired, and you've got shelter nearby to retreat to if things go wrong. In the beginning of the game, you can't eat wolf meat without risk of intestinal parasites, but once your cooking skill gets to level 5, you can safely eat wolf meat, which will come in handy quite often, as you're going to be killing a lot of them. And now we'll talk about bears, which are big, dangerous, but slow and fairly predictable. Bears sleep in caves or underneath small rock overhangs, and they patrol the area that they live in once per day, and then sleep in their cave or overhang at night. One of the things that's randomized for any interloper character is which bear spawns you're going to get in any given zone. And you can confirm if a particular bear is spawned if there are bones in the place where they sleep. When a bear notices you, it will walk towards you slowly and growl at you, but you can usually just run away and it will lose interest after a short amount of time. The most common way that you get into trouble with a bear is when you don't even realize it's there and you get too close because it's on the other side of a rock or some trees or a small hill. It gets within attack distance, and then it's too late. And in circumstances like this, the flare gun is your best friend. Anytime you're walking around and you're unfamiliar with the area, it's best to have your flare gun out for situations just like this. The flare gun will scare away any animal in the game, and it has a chance to one-shot any animal in the game. But in my experience, it's hard to get the flare to actually stick. A lot of times, they just go right through the animal. And I've almost never killed a bear with one shot, but I haven't exactly practiced it either. So while some people do use extreme early game strategies of using flare guns to get bear hides early, the primary purpose of the flare gun is to get animals away from you in an emergency. When you are ready to hunt a bear with your bow and arrow, what you want to look for is some type of terrain that you can get on and off of easily that the bear cannot climb on. So for instance, this fallen tree I can climb up on, but the bear can't get to, so I can draw his attention with the rock and then shoot him, and as long as I draw blood with the arrow, that bear will eventually bleed out. Another option is to climb onto very steep rocks, where the bear also can't walk, and then once he gets within range, shoot him with an arrow and wait for him to bleed out. 
A handy trick you can use when waiting for any animal to bleed out is to check your stat screen after shooting the animal and wait for the number to tick up by one. When you kill a bear with this technique, they can run pretty far and sometimes finding the body can be difficult. So what you want to do is wait for clear weather and look around for crows in the air. You can also listen for them. They'll be hovering over the body and they'll also drop feathers. Another place you can safely hunt a bear from is inside a fishing hut. And from here, the same kind of tactics apply. You draw him close by throwing stones. When he gets close, you shoot him with a bow and arrow, and then you wait for him to bleed out, and you go find the body. If the bear you're hunting happens to path close to a car or a tractor, you can have much more control over where the bear actually dies. In this scenario, you stand next to the car or the tractor when you shoot him, and because you're standing on terrain he can get to, he will charge straight towards you instead of running away. Enter the car and wait for him to walk a short distance away, and then pop out of the car or the tractor and shoot him again. Repeat this process until he dies, so you should be able to reliably kill the bear close to the car or the tractor and not have to go looking for it later. Another technique you can use with even more control involves using the cave that some bears sleep in. And this only works for a very specific type of cave. What you're looking for is this specific formation of rocks in the back of the cave. If the cave that the bear is sleeping in does not have this formation of rocks, it will not work. What these rocks let you do is you can climb up on top of them, and from this spot here at the top of the rocks, the bear cannot get to you. Because bears go to sleep in this cave every night, there's some kind of scripting animation that happens when they cross the threshold of the cave. They stop whatever they're doing and they resume walking. So what you do is lead the bear into the cave by throwing stones, get up on the rocks, crouch, lead him into the center of the cave, and then shoot him. And as he runs out, you throw a stone at the cave again. Because he slows down to walk as he crosses the threshold, you'll be able to get his attention again, and you can rinse and repeat this process until you manage to kill him. The big bonus to killing the bear in this manner is that you get to harvest the bear inside the cave where you don't need a campfire. And similar to the car and tractor technique, you can also use buildings to get the bear to charge towards you and lose interest repeatedly. And this is what happens if you don't go into the car or the building quick enough. You get attacked. If you get attacked by a bear and your health is high, he will never kill you, but he will damage a lot of your equipment, including items besides clothing. So it's one of the only ways in the game that you can have your maglands destroyed, so be careful. The one drawback to using a building instead of a car is that if you stay inside the building for too long, the bear has a chance to reset and you can lose the arrow and the progress on hunting the bear, so just make sure you don't stay inside too long. After you've killed the bear and you're ready to start harvesting it, in most cases you'll be making a campfire to stay warm. Best thing to do is saw off some meat right away to get that cooking. And then once you have enough meat to keep your campfire busy, start quartering the animal and quarter it all the way until it's almost finished quartering. This way, if the weather unexpectedly changes and you have to leave quickly, you can finish the quartering almost instantly and take the hide and guts to whatever shelter you're using nearby. If you're close to a cave and the weather is bad, you can just quarter it from the beginning and drag the bags of meat into the cave. Or if you're very far away from shelter and you're worried about the weather, you can quarter it right away and carry the bags when you get a chance. Of course, you can't actually eat bear meat safely until you get your cooking to level 5. And there is one way to get your cooking to level 5 very quickly on a new interloper character. What you want to do is quarter the first bear you kill and then carry the bags of meat to a cave or a building. Once you're in a safe warm place, what you want to do is harvest the meat in as small of pieces as possible. To do this, start harvesting a normal sized piece of meat and then hit escape almost immediately. You'll know you're getting a small piece of meat when you see the pop up in the corner of the screen. When you finish a bag, start dumping the meat in a place where you can place a lot of campfires. There's only one asset in the game for each type of meat, so even though this meat weighs very little and has very few calories, it looks like a full size of meat and it looks a little silly. You'll need to make four to six campfires to cook the meat in a reasonable amount of time. If you're outdoors, you'll have to wait until you think the weather is going to be stable for a while. Or if you're in a cave, you can make the fires whenever you want. 
Be aware though, it does take quite a lot of firewood to cook this much meat, so you'll need to gather wood for quite a while before starting this. Each time you cook a piece of meat and remove it from the fire, your cooking skill goes up a little bit. And by cooking all these small pieces of meat, you should be able to get at least to level 4 with a single bear. Of course, you can do this technique with any animal type, but it's best to do it with a bear or a moose because of the huge amount of meat you get all at once. This particular bear I harvested and cooked in this manner was quite large, and so I was able to get all the way up to level 5 cooking just from cooking this single bear. Next up, the moose, the most elusive animal in the game. Each zone typically has one to three areas where a moose can show up, and which location you get is randomized for every character. You can tell you're in the right area for a moose to spawn if you see trees with their bark scraped off. The moose scrapes the bark with their antlers to mark their territory, which is fairly small, and the moose tends not to move around much, so if you don't know which area to look in, it can make finding moose even more difficult. If you get too close to a moose, they'll put their antlers down and start stamping their hooves. If you back away in time, they'll lose interest, but if you get too close, they will charge you. And like the bear, your best defense in this situation is the flare gun. All the same kind of tactics you use to hunt bears apply to moose, except for the cave trick. So you'll want to be clambering on steep rocks, or getting in and out of cars, or finding trees that have fallen over but are elevated off the ground. But the main exception from hunting bears is that moose will never bleed out, so you have to kill them directly with damage from arrows. If you damage them with an arrow while you're on inaccessible terrain, they'll run away from you. If you're on terrain they can get to, they'll run towards you. And one of the things you have to figure out is what happens when they run away from the inaccessible terrain you can get onto. You'll either have to take the risk of shooting them out in the open, or lead them back to your inaccessible terrain, or find some different type of terrain to climb onto. Just like with hunting bears, if you have cars, tractors, or buildings that you can duck into temporarily, it will make controlling the animal much easier, and you can almost always be assured to kill it close to the vehicle or the building. Harvesting a moose is just like harvesting a bear, with the exception that you don't need to worry about getting cooking to level 5 before eating the meat because moose are herbivores and bears are omnivores. Lastly, we'll talk about timber wolves, which are only found in Bleak Inlet. And the first thing I'll say about timber wolves is that they are not recommended for players new to Interloper. They were introduced in the same patch that introduced Chapter 3 of Story Mode and Handguns, and they are clearly designed to be fought with handguns, which do not exist on Interloper. Like normal wolves, they're scared of fire, but unlike normal wolves, they won't stay away for very long. They also attack in a pack, and they won't go away until you break their morale, which involves dealing damage or killing enough of them to scare them away. You can see here, I'm in a bit of a sticky situation. I was caught a little unprepared, but I did have a torch ready, so I quickly made a campfire. I'm on a hill, which makes it extremely tricky to shoot them before they disappear over the edge, but at least I've got a fire. A little bit later, I got caught outside in a blizzard. I got disoriented due to the lack of visibility, and I ran into the same pack again. And without a fire, my only real option is to use a marine flare, which I haven't found yet, or to kill them, which is fairly tricky, as they tend to swarm you from all directions at once. Climbing up onto rocks is a good option when available, or once you get to the cannery, you can hop onto this fence to take out the pack awaiting you. Once you get past the initial pack, there's a trailer you can sleep in, and if you want to get to the cannery building itself, there's a parkour route you have to take that starts at this rope. Once you climb up this rope, be prepared for more timber walls, because there's a scripted respawn that happens at least once. The closer you are to the timber wolves, the easier it is to hit them, so I like to wait to shoot them until I get on top of this trailer. 
And I didn't mention it before, but if you're not aware, to get into the cannery building itself, you will have to have retrieved the code from the radio tower in the upper section of Bleak Inlet, and you'll have to wait for an Aurora to operate the keypad. As I mentioned before, Marine Flares are an effective defense against Timberwolves, but you won't find many of them on Interloper, and they don't last for very long. So it's best to save them for when you need to get past Timberwolves quickly, and you don't have the time to stop and kill them. As far as harvesting Timberwolves, once they're dead, they're effectively a large wolf. The hide you get will be a wolf hide, not a Timberwolf hide. They'll have more meat than a normal wolf, but you'll still need Cooking 5 to be able to eat it without risk of catching parasites. So, that's the end of my interlooper animal guide. I hope you found it useful. Have a good day, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.